Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming to the talk. Uh, my name is Victor Tozo. I work in the VIRT team in Red Hat. And I come today to share a little bit of this journey that I had last year when I wanted to uh, share a USB device that was connected into a Kubernetes node, into the VM, running in the same node. So the goal of this talk is to explain the key concepts behind uh, how make device pass through possible uh, with Kubernetes. Uh, but first, a little bit about me. Uh, so I work at Red Hat for quite a long time already. It's 10 years this year. I started in the desktop team uh, doing some GNOME and Windows integrations for the SPICE uh, remote desktop protocol. And over the past two years or so, I've been more focused on the working with the Kubevirt folks, uh, mainly in the Virt stack, so libvirt and PMU and USB Redir related stuff, also sidecar hook API and some device plugin. Uh, this is also to say that I'm very goal oriented. So when I start working on something, I try to you know like try to achieve something, but I not necessarily learn all the things around it. And Kubernetes is so huge, so there are a lot that I don't know. So it's like a disclaimer. And uh, the agenda for today is to cover just a little bit of uh, uh, basic concepts first, then talk how uh, device pass through would work in a simple case without Kubernetes. Then uh, the core of the talk is about uh, explaining device plugins, the framework itself in Kubernetes and how uh, we do it in Kubevirt, how we use it in Kubevirt. Uh, we talk a little bit about limitations and, and future solutions for the limitations, and if everything goes well, a demo in the end. So at this point, I, I think it's uh, Kubernetes is well established, but does anyone not know what Kubernetes is? It's just, yeah, yeah, everybody's familiar, so there is no real need go through this slide. But this one is interesting, uh, just to point in point that by default, in Kubernetes, you have those two resources that you can set up for your workload. They are system resources, and you can do requests uh, and establish some limits. But what about other kind of devices that you, your application might want to use, uh, how we manage those uh, with Kubernetes? So of course, device plugins will be the, the current solution. Uh, yeah, and of course, I'm talking about Kube, uh, Kube, uh, uh, virtualization and, and Kubevirt, right? I will be talking a little bit about Kubevirt in a, in a second, but for us, DevKVM is essential for virtualization, So, and this is also used in device plugins. So without device plugins, we don't really have an easy way to get a cloud nat native uh, way of doing virtualization in Kubernetes, so it's very important. Kubevirt, uh, does anyone not know what Kubevirt is as well? Someone? No? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's an extension of Kubernetes. It basically allows you to run VMs as a workload as well. So you, uh, the same way that you could say, uh, I want to run this application as a pod, you now have a similar way to Say I want a VM running together with uh, with pod. Like it's an extension, so you don't actually change. Uh, you you just improve it. You just extend it. So you have your still like uh, applications workloads running uh, in the node, but thanks to Kubevirt, uh, now you can have, for instance, a pod with PMU. So it's the hypervisor that we use. Uh, and yeah, that's 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 Kubevirt. Uh, important to highlight here as well that uh, our stack in Kubevirt uses KMU and Libvirt, so it's the Libvirt manages uh, KMU for us. And two key components as well to explain uh, from Kubevirt is Virt Handler and Virt Launcher. So Virt Handler is the is a de the demo set that we have. It runs one every node. And it's uh, so it's a high high privileged one, and they they uh, talk with uh, virt launcher. When you have to spin a VM, you need to someone to 
configure libvirt and to manage the VM status, etc. So this is virtual launcher. So this one is one uh, per VM virtual launcher, and this one is one per node. So just to have some basic understanding of the design of kubvirt. And this is an example of uh, running, uh, uh, creating a VM. Uh, so you would apply the same way that you would with uh, pods, but uh, the, the kind is a virtual machine instance. You can say, you can see some configurations here. It's not one to one to libvirt, for those that know libvirt. Uh, it's a subset of uh, possibilities, and virt handler, kubvirt API will manage uh, everything else. And libvirt as well will manage everything else that might be missing. So here, one gigabyte memory for this VM. Uh, you have a, a virtual uh, disk using container disk. It's, uh, volumes in, in kubvirt, you have several options. This is like, I uh, have a container with a disk, a key code 2 or raw, and I want to use it. And that's it. Like we, with that, we can run a VM if you have kubvirt installed. I'm going through device plugins uh, as a simple case. Simple case means, well, normal bare metal kind of uh, virtualization. This is for this is uh, this is this example is using USB, and this is very well established in KMU, right? Like uh, it's from the early ages of KMU, 2009, 2010. So uh, we have those APIs for a long time. Uh, to pass, for instance, USB to KMU, you either have to pass the bus an address of the USB device or the vendor and product. This could be not unique, but uh, uh, KMU will choose one of those devices. Uh, the, the above is unique. And the same API for libvirt, uh, here using just bus and device, but could be uh, also for, for vendor and product. Uh, important to highlight, so this is a simple case to, to to bare metal virtualization, but in the end, uh, Virt Launcher will be configuring uh, uh, libvirt and KMU. So in the end, uh, Lib Virt Launcher will need to have this kind of information, so it will configure the, the VM properly. So yeah, this is uh, important to have in mind. And we can, so far, any questions before going to device plugins? No? Okay. Uh, so device plugins. Uh, what is it? Uh, so it's a way to advertise uh, resources, more commonly hardware resources, to uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so it's a framework that you implement and you can then do ex uh, uh, expose some devices to be used by your workload. The main things to the device plugin has to do to keep in mind, like this are the three main character characteristics of the device plugin, is that it needs to handle the discovery of the devices. So the, it would have to look into, if you're talking about USB, you would have to look into USB devices that are in the, in the plug it in the node, and based on some factor, it will choose those that you want to exp uh, expose. Uh, allocation, so, when it's time to create a workload that we use device plugin, uh, Kubelet will talk with, um, with the device plugin in order to have the metadata needed, uh, uh, the, the, the path of the device and, and other information perhaps needed. Uh, so allocation is the, is the process. And health check as well, because the device might change state, so it might not be available anymore to be uh, allocated to a workload. So uh, this is also the, in the, the, the device plugin needs to be aware of this and, and, and keeping uh, updating the control plane of Kubernetes. Uh, so the devices that we want to have in our workload might be in any node, so uh, it will run in each node, the device plugin. Uh, also inter interesting is how this is uh, uh, handled by, by Kubernetes in general. So the devices, you have to map it to some resource name. So here in the example to the left, you have uh, an example of how that uh, happens. Like uh, you have a device, uh, USB device, that will give an example later. And it's mapped it to the Kubernetes storage USB. And this is in a normal pod, not a VM. 
how you would ask for that resource to be allocated to your pod. And yeah, other technical interesting stuff to mention is that uh, the device plugin will be talking with the kubelet, and this happens over a Unix talk, and the communication is gRPC. Um, so here is a basic workflow. Uh, if we if let's start from the, the from the top right, is the the so the device plugin on the top right it wants to register itself. So you install the device plugin, it wants to register itself. So Kubelet knows of its existence. So what happens is that the Kubelet creates this Unix socket, and the, in the right place there is a right place to put it, and the Kubelet will be checking, and then eventually it will know that there is a device plugin, and then it will connect and, and call the first method, which is the get device plugins options. Uh, so it's basically some sort of capabilities exchange to tell what the device plugin will be doing. And then the device plugin returns those options. And then the kubelet says, okay, give me the, the devices that you have. So is this operation list and watch. And this is a stream operation, so it basically keeps uh, updating if needed. Uh, so if you plug any device, it will keep updating the kubelet of it. Eventually, the request comes to allocate the device to some pods, and then the allocation happens. The, the kubelet asks the, the device plugin, I want to allocate this specific device ID, and the device plugin should then return the metadata for the allocation. Uh, so these in red are the mandatory uh, uh, gRPC calls that you have to implement, but there are two optional ones in blue. The, the first one, get preferred allocation, is so basic, basic, based on the pool of devices that you have, uh, you can implement this and say, from this pool of devices, I have this set of devices that I would, write, would like to have a preference. But in the end, it's up to the device manager running Kubelet what to do, so he can completely ignore it if he wants. So it's just a matter of preference uh, to make the device manager to make a more informed decision. And the price start container method is so if you have some work to do in the device before it's being allocated to the pod, uh, this is the right call. It's like, a, let's say, resetting a memory or configuring the FPGA, something like that on device that needs configuration. So this is the, the place. And uh, the way to have those calls uh, called is uh, with the get device plugins option. So you set it there. So far, OK? Yeah? So yeah, I did some small examples of, uh, of how those three things work, the discover, discovery, allocation, and the health check. Uh, so here you have two work nodes. And uh, the device plugin in the middle uh, recognizes one USB storage that wants to expose. It will then let the kubelet know, and kubelet will then inform the control plane. So when workloads request this device, the, the API, the control plane will know that there is this node that has this device. Um, similar, very similar. It's the health check. It's always the list and watch uh, call. You update the stream to say if a device becomes unplugged or perhaps it was binded to another process in the in the host, then the device plugin should be aware of this and let uh, the kubelet know, which will update the information in the control plane. Uh, allocation. So yeah, then it comes a external request saying I, I need this resource, and eventually it reaches the scheduler. The scheduler knows, OK, this, this node in the middle has the, the resource, so it tells the kubelet to create the pod. Before creating the pod, uh, it needs to call the allocate. The device plugin will let uh, kubelet know the information that uh, it's necessary for the, for the workload to have access to the USB. And then eventually the pod is created, and it has then access to that storage. The nice thing about all of this so far is that it's very uh, cloud native, right? You have everything exposed in Kubernetes. How then it works in, so far, so good? Yeah. How it works with the kubevert? 
we want in the end to have the USB device show into the guest. So that works as a, with Virt Handler, which is the component that is a demo set is uh, it's, it's privileged. We can then spin the device plugin we have already for for some time for PCI for since the existence I think from on Kubevert because you have to have access to Dev KVM for the virtualization and all of that is under uh, a device plugin component in Virt Handler. So it's a it's a separate process that uh, is spin and runs in uh, in the demo set pod. Um, yeah. Yeah, so in regards of uh, how you have to map the device with a resource name so you can then define the resource name into the pod, you have to have some sort of API, some place that you set this information. And in Kubevert, we use the custom resource definition of Kubevert. And this is like a, a cloud administration privilege. So it's a cluster pri a privilege uh, uh, setting. So it's not for everyone. It's just for those that have the, because yeah, you, you are going to expose multiple devices from multiple nodes. It needs to be somewhat, it's not for everyone, I think, to change it. Uh, we do then use some the, the selectors, we say it, uh, for identify, for instance, from a, a range of USB devices or a range of uh, PCI devices, which ones are mapped to this uh, resource name. So the name of that is selectors. And yeah, it's already an existing API. Uh, so for USB, it was just added in, on top of it. Here is an example. I hope you can see well. Uh, so this is the CRD update that we do. The feature, the feature that is host device is under feature gate, so it's not enabled by default. You have to enable it. Uh, so you can do it so by adding this configuration here. And here I'm trying to map. I'm mapping a vendor and product uh, USB device with this values to Kubevert IO storage. So across the node, every device that has these values, they will be mapped to this. And then we'll be able to, in the example on the right, run a VM uh, on the nodes that has those devices. So here, uh, yeah, uh, under host devices here, the, you have to set the resource name, the device name, sorry, mapping it to uh, the resource name, and then you you always give a name to it as well because you can have multiples. So I have to get, have a way to make a difference between them. Uh, so far so good. Yeah. So limitations. There are quite, there are a few that are so this is awesome. It works, but there are some some yeah some limitations, some drawbacks, some some stuff that we would love to have fixed in the near future. And one of those, for instance, is the lack of persistence of uh, the device over pod lifetime. So for VMs, for instance, uh, a little bit different. It's like there is a state to it. But if you restart and the pod is recreated, over pod recreation, the resource that we allocated to the VM is then returns to the pool of devices. And then the resources are released, and you have to do it again. Uh, this is suboptimal. Uh, also because if the device has some state to it, you lose it. And you have to get like a new device, set it again. It might take some time. Uh, the random device assignment as well, like the, the one above. So if you have, so I have a, like a, a use case where someone has a weather device, USB device, and that needs to be connected to the VM properly, right? Like you don't want to have like a Boston weather in Berno or something like a, you have to have the right mapping. And there are ways to work around it, but uh, it's, it's pretty uh, bad if you have a random device assignment with a, like an application crashing or something, and then you have to work around it. Uh, also, one thing that I, I find it a bit upsetting is that uh, it's a limited API for device lifecycle. So 
when uh, you have the allocate, you can prepare the device to be allocated with the pre start container, but you have nothing for terminating. Again, this is likely possible to work around it, but it's not part of the API itself. So, yeah, let's say you have a storage device again with some database, the, pod, the application crashes, and perhaps this is allocated to someone else. This is not something that uh, you might want, right? Uh, but there is a solution uh, in the horizon. Uh, I just wanted to point it out. Is the d dynamic resource allocation. Is it still in alpha? And the API is very close to uh, persistent volume claims. So you have resources, uh, resource classes, you have resource claims templates, and resource claims. So basically you say, I want this resource, you create a resource claim, and then for the life cycle of this resource claim, that device will be allocated. Even if the, the pod crashes, when it starts again, or the VM uh, comes back, the same device will be allocated to that uh, workload. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, the main folks working on this are, are related to uh, vGPUs. They want to, they have so many use cases, like so many interesting use cases, and they are trying to fix all of them using DRA. So when this gets out, uh, GA, we, we will be very happy. We will be able to do many things. Uh, yeah, and also there is already uh, a better API for handling life cycles, so the okay, so this is something that uh, I find important. Um, yeah, so far, so good. Yeah, demo. Let's see if I started my VM properly. Yeah, so just to explain, I'm creating... I, I really like this demo in the sense that uh, I can showcase also the development environment of Kubevert. And I find it so cool because you can have like configurations like this. So I'm, I'm starting like uh, uh, Kubernetes 1.29 and I can set up some memory and some devices. So what's happening here is like I'm creating a single, in this case, I'm creating, I created already a single uh, node cluster. With, uh, so it's virtualized, it's a VM, this node, and has that amount of memory in the VM. And I also have emulated USB devices to KMU. They are storage USB devices. And uh, yeah, so I don't really need to even try to rip, uh, uh, do anything with my laptop. It's all virtualized, it's all emulated. Uh, So let's double check. Everything is, is here. I can SSH to the node and just double check. Yes, so I created correctly, which makes me happy because it takes up to seven minutes to start the VM. So otherwise, I would have to play a video. Uh, so this is just to say, like, I SSH to the node. I run the, MS, the, the MSG and Ask it, do we have USB devices on the, on, the, on the log? Yes, I have three. Are those three that I created on the top, on the command line here? Now, uh, as I said, the, this is behind the feature gate, and I have to set up the CRD to say, please, uh, all those vendor and product devices, I would like to, I would like to expose. So I will be applying this, you can see, yeah. Uh, so this is the feature gate that I'll be changing, I'll be enabling it, and creating the USB device storage for vendor and product. So for this is the value for the emulated USB device in KMU. Yeah, are we good? Now I can go ahead and I will be creating this VM. Uh, it's very similar to the one that I put in the slide previously. So I'm saying, create this host device for me. Yeah. So it's scheduling. It takes hopefully not too long. Uh, I don't know. I can also describe, I think, the node.
So you, we can see uh, some, yeah, we can see that we, here it's a, it's a limitation of the Kubernetes itself, okay? Uh, as far as I understand, the number of KVM devices, one. It's not true, we create like a, a huge number so we can create multiple VMs in each node, similar to the Kubernetes IO storage. I was tracking this as a bug before, but it's not a bug, it's a feature. And, and so yeah, just so you know, you can uh, look into the resources that you created over uh, the scribe node. And why wow, you are not, please. Don't do that with me. Yeah, demo gods are not happy with me. Uh, I created it correctly, right? Yeah, sorry, but it worked, I swear. Uh, but it would be good to know why. So far, besides the demo failing, <laughs> anyone has questions? We have a few, like five minutes or so at least, so perhaps I can start it again. We can take a look at how long it takes. So that's the, also the cool thing about uh, this environment, is that you can just create a new cluster if you want. 129, yeah. But uh, if you, uh, it will take five minutes or so, but I have a video also, uh, but I'll put it on slides, not, not worth mentioning now. Think because it's just like uh, showing that the, the device is actually in the VM. Uh, no questions? Yeah. Can you repeat, sorry? Yeah, this is not a kind cluster. Uh, you can run kind clusters as well. This is a custom environment uh, in Kubevert for uh, spinning up, uh, it basically creates a KMU VM and installs uh, a, a Kubernetes image for the node. Ah, sorry, yeah. So she asked if this is which kind of uh, cluster this is. Uh, if it's a kind cluster, uh, but you can specify specific no, uh, uh, Kubernetes images, CI images for different kind of clusters as well. Uh, but no, it's uh, by default is a. Uh, uh, custom based, right? Yeah. Anyone else? I hope it's uh, second time is the charm, right? But I might play the video, I not. The video I did was using this ASCII image, so it will be very small. You know, ASCII, ASCII. It's basically the same thing. It takes three minutes, so why not? Uh, but it's a, uh, it's upstream. It's a, uh, I shared it on, on the, on the website. Uh, can you see it? You yeah. yeah, this is uh, <coughs> for USB. This is uh, since version one dot one. So. I think uh, eight months ago or so, we had uh, Kubernetes one dot dot zero dot two release already, and feature freeze for one dot three. Now, yeah.
yeah, this is just to show how I did like uh, configuration. I had multiple nodes as well before on this demo, I think. It would be nice if it's possible to speed up. One minute, yeah. The demo, it was fast. That demo. Ah, yeah, this is a, uh, no, it's the same thing. But it's, uh, if we had the VM running, I would show you the, uh, the describe of the, the VMI object. It's very interesting because you then get much more information from there than you can get from the API itself. So it's, uh, I think it's useful, but uh, you need a VM running. Perhaps it will show. You see a uh, virt handler, the, all the other uh, components as well. Yeah, very fast. Thank you. Yeah, so I only allocated one. Uh, to the VM, and I think that's it. Most I put, yeah. There's nothing else. So, yeah. Questions? Any questions? No. Okay. So thank you. <laughs>